It was a very tough decision to go pro while still being in school. I didn't know if I was going to be able to maintain good grades while also playing Rocket League a ton and missing a ton of school. So it was definitely a very tough decision. Balancing school and playing professionally is pretty hard sometimes. I'm tired quite often because I don't sleep as much as I would like to, but that's probably my fault. But I don't have to put that much effort into school to get the grades I want to, so it's not all that bad. But some days are pretty long, going from a seven hour school day to three hours of scrims and just playing Rock League all day. My passion for Rock League was born back in 2017 when I got the game with my IRL friends. I just played for fun and I got very good very fast and I started getting interested in eSport as I got better and from there on I kind of wanted to go pro but I didn't really think I had the ability to. I ended up switching to PC and I just got very good very fast but I did not play when I wanted to for two years so that was pretty hard just seeing all my friends and watching a game I really wanted to play but couldn't. I didn't really know what I wanted to pursue just a normal high school life or trying to go pro in Rocket League but then once I made up my mind I was able to talk to my parents about it and they were supportive. His friends told us he was good. We, my wife and I, had zero clue what that meant, but he did, we realized pretty early on that he was, a, he was good at what he did. We always set a high level of expectation for our kids. It was the expectation of, sure, you can do this, but the expectations are that the academics need to be maintained. And he met them, and when the kids are meeting the expectations, it's hard to say no. My wife and I are trying to be very open-minded about how we think through this. Given the fact that he's approaching it in a professional, academic, responsible way, I'll give him the latitude. I couldn't be more proud of him at maintaining his academics. And the relationships he's built, I think, will last a lifetime. And that's an area where, again, I was unaware of what that looked like. And when I, candidly, when I saw him first time in Rotterdam at a LAN, and I saw the relationships that he has around the globe, I was very impressed. So I could not be more proud of him. When I got offered to join Gen.G Mobile and Racing, it didn't really feel real. I wasn't really that excited at first because I just didn't really understand almost why they were picking me up because it did kind of seem stupid to take a chance, but they seemed to notice my potential. And then once I actually started playing, it was the most fun I've ever had playing the game. Being the rookie on the team was pretty hard at the beginning of the season. I was kind of worried about performing well because I did think that if I didn't perform well, I would just get most of the hate and blame directed towards me. So I really wanted to perform, but now I enjoy kind of being the rookie on the team. I think it's pretty cool that we've done this well. I would describe my journey as turbulent in, uh, in Rocket League. I've had uh, a lot of ups and downs. I've been on several teams. It was very stressful as a player, but now as a coach, I guess some of the stress has gone away, but it's been replaced with a different kind of stress. You know, you're not fighting for your position as much, but you still work hard to try to get your players to perform their best. So it's, it's better now, but yeah, it was definitely turbulent for the most of my career. Working with the team from Canada, like away from them is, it's all right, you know. Most of my career has been online with my teammates, so it's not much different, but I think my job is slightly harder when I'm remote compared to in person. It's easy for a player, like after a bad day, to just disconnect from the call and you can't get a <laughs> contact with them. So when you're in person, obviously, they can't just run away as easily. <laughs> when you're face to face, it's way easier to empathize with someone and not come off as rude or mean. So coaching Jack, Nolan, and Chronic, it's been, it's been amazing. We're all great friends. We can criticize each other and praise each other as well and just hang out outside the game. So it's been really fun. The experience that I bring as a coach is mainly from like an ex-competitor side of things. Like I've been at the top of uh, NA or near it at least for five years for sure. So I know how to deal with the pressure when you know it's a big moment and I also think I understand the game really well so they value my opinion and uh, my insight. So I think that's my biggest strength when it comes to uh, helping them as a coach. 
Well, I think burnout is prominent because these players, they need to play 60, 70 hours a week, which is an unholy amount. It's like 10 hours a day. It's hard to avoid it because most of the time they actually like playing the game, you know? So they don't even realize that the amount of time they're putting in might hurt them. To me, work-life balance is probably the most important thing. I hate just being stuck on my computer all day and not getting out. I think it's super important to clear your mind because you don't want to keep your bad habits that you may have developed over like a bad tournament. My favorite things to do to have a good work-life balance are generally like working on my car. That's something that, you know, stress less when I do that. You need to be able to completely separate yourself from the game, you know? recharge and then come back with a, a fresh mind and if you come back with a fresh mind you're more likely to accept criticism and uh, that's what we want from our players you know if everyone's frustrated they don't want to listen to criticism like, it's just going to hurt us more so yeah it's very important to stay fresh i want to say thank you to all the fans who have been supporting us even through these couple rough tournaments i know we set the expectation really high with uh, all the finals at the start of the season but we're hoping to uh, end the season off with a bang you know we want to be world champions and we appreciate everyone's support, always. It was definitely hard at first going from a team with no expectations to a team that is expected to win because I never had that much pressure on me before, but eventually I kind of adjusted and I think I usually can live up to those expectations. Because of the split, my confidence has definitely dropped down pretty heavily, especially during the split. But after the phase tiebreaker series, I think that that replenished us a lot and we'll be pretty confident going to the major. The night before the phase match, Chronic called us all up individually. Like he took the initiative and was like, what's the problem? Like, can you tell me? He was really wanting to know to fix it, which honestly inspired me and I think it inspired Jack. To be in Boston after how bad it was and how dire the, the situation got, we're just happy to be here. You got anything you want to do? Right, just not <laughs> <laughs> what is your biggest pet peeve while playing rock? Whilst playing rock league, biggest pet peeve whilst playing rock league has got to be people who watch replays just as you make the mistake and then they skip. Like, if you do that, you're just, I, I don't even know what to say to you. You're asking for something, I don't know. To all the haters, I'm sure you're happy because we're fifth seed for this tournament, but I'll give you something to laugh about after we win. <laughs> uh, we're done. Cool. Yeah, always a pleasure. Thank you very much, you're appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, the arena's like pretty small, and if there's a lot of people, it'll be loud. It'll be loud. It's yeah. like London, Cop, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cop like Cop box. Uh, it's the exact same layout, no? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pretty similar. It, it does remind me of that. That was the best crowd. London? Yeah. Really? By far. Yeah. Hopefully this one can get close. This is gas line. <laughs> so I said, is this the right cable? And you went, no, it's these. Because I went to the left first. And you Damn, went, no, I'm, sorry, I'm not going to lie, I don't, I don't remember that happening. I don't remember that happening. He's an idiot. That's no, why. No, 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 I don't remember that happening. I feel like you're just lying. He's playing up to the camera because earlier he said it's his fault and not mine. That's, that's the best, <laughs> that that's the best part. That is true, but I was that's just being nice. Part. I was just being no, nice. No, no, no. We won a major whilst we were living in Canada, so. No, you were not by then. Yeah. No, you still live in the Where was I living? You were living down the road. Yeah, I was homeless. <laughs> BDS, it'll be nice to play against them. I've not played them since I moved from Europe. I'm confident for it. I think it'll be a good match. This is their first match on LAN for maybe 10 months or something like that. Rise is playing very well on LAN and you know he's one of my friends, so it'll be nice to play against him. It is game one. There's still plenty of time for them. But we're seeing a strong start from Gen G! A scoring chance. BDS could not put that in, so it's not even that Gen G's playing out of this world. Oh, lovely. He has been running up the numbers in Europe. He has been on top of the chart. Multiple splits in a row, but now we see Gen G answer back in game two. It's the player from Team BDS off the pitch. They're through. They look comfortable. They can get some attacking themselves. Oh, oh, that was enough, so though. Go in. The counter. Chronic does keep it up. Chronic sees Jack over on the side wall. Back to the middle. Nolly has to go. Out of boost. Nolly will do a light touch to Jack. Monkey Moon of his own backboard. Jack boosted up, but doesn't get there in time.
to drop into the lower bracket's tough, you know, because you've lost. But for us as a team, like, we're lucky to even be here. So I don't think a loss is going to, like, be too much on us mentally. The team is definitely better at handling losses now. At the beginning, we kind of didn't need to handle losses because we really didn't lose all that much. So in this past back end of the season, we've definitely had to adjust to losing more. Maybe the expectations aren't as high this tournament for us. And that helps, you know, you don't have these unrealistic thoughts about stuff that you have to get to the finals through the uppers. If you drop to the lowers, it's fine. I think my teammates will be fine. I know myself, I'll be fine. We'll deal with it as it comes. I'm happy to slow down, but we need to be calm. If we really want to slow down, we need to be really calm. Mm -hmm. And like the first split, we were so calm. Because mm -hmm. it, it just, <clears throat> we had no reason not to be calm. I do think we need a play style change, but I think it's like a play style change to minimize mechanical mistakes because like every goal kind of came from a pretty bad mistake. We said like, what did we say the night before? Like we, we'll lose if we make mistakes. Yeah. Like they don't, they didn't force anything to happen. We, they just played off our mistakes and they did it well. And yeah, we, we made, made them a lot. We made yeah. them a lot. I think we've had some pretty good adjustments. Mm -hmm. And as long as we execute tomorrow, we'll be fine. I mean, we've got a, yeah. a easy. Bracket. Yeah, we've got a fairly simple lower bracket as long as we play pretty good. You know. A lot of resilience is required to make it through the lower bracket because you just have to win so many series and you know you can't lose a single one or else you're out. We're all pretty good at keeping the vibes high when we're low. Feeling healthy, feeling good, feeling happy. We're gonna win. Two two after two games today. Three oh, both. Chronic is on uh Chronic is missed like the shuttle. Say what you said. I was waiting for it. I was like, you are you not getting this one? He was like, I was waiting for it. He's missed the show. <laughs>
Because right. tall people tend to be stupider as well. Well, I think... Uh, you know, I think how, well, how does that make sense? Because the, the circulation, you know, you need so much more energy to, to work around. Whereas us short people... Yeah, like, do you think you're the smartest on the team? Yeah, by far. <laughs> that's, okay, that's I'm not crazy. gonna lie. That's so funny. I'm not that's gonna so lie, you're definitely, had... you're definitely in last. <laughs> last? I've, I've, got a, I've got a higher degree than you, Connor. You can't say anything. I'm still in school, bro. It's not my fault. Na natural selection. Until, until until you get my education, you know, you're, you're last. No, you're pretty, you're pretty like narcissistic almost. <laughs> no, you know, I've said that. Like, I don't know that's a bad thing. You think, like, you think like everything you do is like perfect? Like, that's like, I feel like that's a narcissistic view. You don't talk about me, you know, Jack? I know. Oh, I think you're laughing at that. I'm laughing at that. Um, no, I agree. No, 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 I laughed at what you said. I think you're, uh, I think you're capping. Am I? Yeah. No, nah, now you can back me up on that one. I wouldn't say I'm narcissistic, I'm just like always right. No, we're an NA team. I mean, we've competed here since the start of this team as a whole. We're definitely NA. We wouldn't say we're EU. I think the crowd would be incredible. I think the arena looks amazing, you know. From what I've seen so far, the stage looks really good. And I think people are really excited for this lap. We're going to have a level shown that hasn't been shown at a major before, I think. The crowd will be here for it. You know, they'll love that, and I can't wait for it. 1v1 big block from Chronic. It's off the backboard. Noli, huge clear. Abject, right wing, shot, fires, and scores! You've got Abject creeping forward. Noli launches it on the bazooka, and it's 5 to nothing. Down to the other field. And he's just disrupting the rotation. That's all Noli's job is. Just Let's get the pass. Run. And make the apple, and Abject, the captain. Play around it, times it perfectly. Abject turn to rotate through the midfield. Chronic gets pulled off the play. He's gonna have to play towards the side. This is where Lakeland can start to push up and oh, keep their numbers win. intact. But that's a huge clear from Gen G. These reads out of Gen G clearing it all the way down the other side. It's not only relieving pressure, it's wasting time. Abject wasting no time to put that shot on target. Saved out. One player's back. Nobody's actually there. And it's gonna be Chronic. Seconds to go, Atone reads the play from the backboard, but Noli, booming clear down the other end. One more chance. Does he have enough? Oski trying to end it here. Oh no. It's OT. No. It's still alive, but Gen G looking for the kill. The dagger is back. And of course, of course they find it. No, we have. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I do want to go farther after suit, but it's not the end of the world. No, yeah. And I'm just having fun with this lap. I'm really having fun. Yeah, it was definitely you know different pressure at the start of the season compared to now. Start of the season, we had the pressure of kind of proving ourselves to everyone. You know, not even like including ourselves. Just like we didn't know what was going to happen. Compared to now, we have the pressure of being number one. You know, we're number one in points and having that pressure on us it's a nice pressure but it's also harsh you know so we welcome it nowadays we do welcome it in a very tense series the, the stakes incredibly high for oh! and it's chronic lieutenant america who gets the opening goal gg struggling in terms of getting that physicality in in terms of vitality been able to just rip, dodge all sorts of bumps Keep things working for them now, but maybe a chance here. Jack puts the shot on, and it's in! Get, we'll get the flick over, clearing away the danger. That was well defended by Kronik Dewey. He did not panic, realized what he had to do, even though he didn't have any boost in the tank. Here goes Zen, though, just ahead of Kronik. But now Nolan can send it downfield. Kronik is there! He's got it! And he's it! for an opportunity. They need to create something here. Yeah. Give all the play. Zinc gets the bump. Alvaz and open it. And we're all tied. They scored as many in this game as they have all series. But here goes Alpha. He can stay with it. Zinc. Three balls for Zinc for the win.
came into this land with uh, not really ex any expectations, you know, it was it was always going to be difficult. We did our best to regain this tournament, you know, we came through with the top six when in reality we shouldn't really be here, but yeah, on to the next. What uh, matters yeah. is how you bounce back, yeah. right? Uh, mm -hmm. I thought I, I enjoyed this one. I thought it was a good time. And Honestly, yeah, like it was a good time. It was, it was, a, good it was, time. It was a good learning. Like yeah. it was just up and down. It is surreal. It's like I didn't expect to be in this position a few years ago. I still kind of don't expect it. I don't take it for granted, or at least I'd like to think I don't. I'll make every moment count. You know, I'll, I'm sure I'll look back and wish I made every moment count more. So I can only show as much hard work as I can give, you know. And I try to give as much as I can because there's so many people that would want this opportunity. And sometimes I, I sit and go, God, there's so many things that like, I wish I could do that I can't because of this. And you complain about it. And then you take a step back and realize, nah, you're, you're off with that one. You know, there's so many people that would kill for your opportunity. So it's, it's, it is surreal. Having people that properly care about you, care about what you do and look up to you, it's one of the best feelings you could have. And they're just regular people like me. I mean, we just talk, you know, I, there's so many conversations I've had with fans that are just like, yeah, you're just lovely, mate. Like, you're an absolutely nice guy. And it's great to just have a regular conversation with them. So it means a lot. The amount of support we've been given over this season is just amazing. Hopefully we'll provide good gameplay in return. It's at least a promise to, to try and we'll never not try. We'll always give it our best. To the fans, Thank you for supporting us, especially through our downs. Please continue to support us, and yeah, thank you for everything. Uplift us so we can get back to winning, you know, and obviously that's better for you guys as well. So yeah, just keep supporting us, and I appreciate everything so far.